What if I told you the secret to thriving plants isn't what you think? Forget everything you know about traditional soil amendments because we've stumbled upon an unexpected superfood that's blowing away even rice in terms of performance. Get ready to have your gardening perspective completely transformed. For decades we've operated under a fundamental misconception about soil health. We've been told that fertility requires constant additions of synthetic fertilizers, commercial composts, or trendy amendments like rice hulls and biochar. The global gardening community has built an entire infrastructure around the belief that soil is inherently deficient and needs constant supplementation. We purchase bags of amendments, haul in truckloads of compost, and meticulously measure nutrient ratios, all while our plants continue to underperform. What if this alternative was sitting right under our noses, dismissed as waste or, you know, just overlooked entirely? The unexpected hero turns out to be spent coffee grounds, but not in the way you might think. We're actually discussing a specific fermentation and application process that transforms this super common waste product into a microbial powerhouse that, honestly, fundamentally restructures soil biology. When properly processed through brief anaerobic fermentation followed by aerobic composting, coffee grounds become what we call caffeinated soil inoculant, delivering both immediately available nutrients and long-lasting biological transformation. Our initial trials began almost by accident. While we were testing various organic amendments for their ability to support beneficial fungi, we noticed that beds amended with fermented coffee grounds consistently outperformed those treated with rice hulls, aged manure, and even premium worm castings. Plants in the coffee amended beds showed, honestly, about 30% faster establishment, deeper green coloration, and root systems that were visibly more extensive. When we harvested our first crop of lettuce from these beds, the yield difference was just staggering. The coffee amended beds produced nearly double the biomass of rice hull beds, with leaves that were crisper, more flavorful, and significantly more resistant to pest damage. When we examined soil samples under microscopy, we discovered fungal networks in the coffee amended soil that were, honestly, three to four times more extensive than in conventionally amended beds. The bacterial populations were similarly enhanced, with a particular abundance of nitrogen-fixing species and phosphate-solubilizing bacteria that make nutrients available to plants. Coffee grounds contain approximately 2% nitrogen by weight, but they also contain phenolic compounds and caffeine, which, you know, can inhibit plant growth when applied directly. However, when you ferment coffee grounds for 72 hours in an oxygen-limited environment, some really remarkable transformations occur. Beneficial bacteria, especially lactobacillus species, break down the inhibitory compounds while preserving valuable nutrients. These bacteria multiply exponentially, creating populations in the billions per gram of material. When this fermented material is composted aerobically for about two to three weeks, Fungal species colonize the substrate, especially beneficial mycorrhizal fungi and saprophytic species that really excel at breaking down complex organic compounds. The result is, well, simultaneously a nutrient source, a microbial inoculant, and a soil structure enhancer. So, let's dive into how this mechanism really works on multiple levels. First off, the fermented grounds, they provide readily available nitrogen that plants can immediately access, it's pretty fascinating. Secondly, the massive microbial populations introduced with the amendment rapidly colonize the rhizosphere, forming these amazing symbiotic relationships with plants. And then thirdly, the physical structure of partially decomposed coffee grounds creates these ideal microsites for continued microbial activity. This maintains high biological activity long after application, quite the powerhouse, isn't it? Now, when we compare this to rice hull applications, the differences become, well, pretty clear. Rice hulls primarily offer physical benefits, improving aeration and drainage while slowly contributing silica. They're essentially inert from a biological standpoint. Coffee grounds, by contrast, are biologically explosive, 
catalyzing existing soil food webs while introducing new beneficial species. It's a whole different ballgame. Rice hulls. They improve soil structure over months or even years. But, with properly processed coffee grounds, you see improvements in soil biology within days and in structure within just weeks. It's quite a remarkable difference, wouldn't you agree? So, consider Maria, a community gardener dealing with heavily compacted clay soil. You know, despite using traditional amendments, she saw minimal impact over three years. But then, within just six weeks of incorporating fermented coffee grounds, her soil structure really transformed. Clay, aggregates started breaking apart, earthworm populations increased fivefold, and her spring greens germination rate jumped from 60 to 95%. Or, take James, who gardens in sandy, nutrient-poor coastal soil that just drained way too quickly. Rice hulls had actually made things worse by increasing drainage even more. But, the fermented coffee grounds dramatically improved water-holding capacity while creating nutrient reservoirs. His pepper plants, which had always produced sparse, thin-walled fruits, suddenly started yielding thick, meaty peppers with intense flavor. The economic advantages are equally compelling. A gardener maintaining, say, 400 square feet might spend anywhere from $50 to $200 each year on amendments. But, you know, that same gardener can actually source enough coffee grounds from local coffee shops to meet all their needs and usually at no cost beyond just the effort of picking them up. The environmental implications reach even further. Coffee grounds represent a pretty significant waste stream, with millions of tons generated every year. Most of it ends up in landfills, where it generates methane as it decomposes. By diverting this waste into gardens, we reduce landfill burden and also displace manufactured fertilizers, which, honestly, require a lot of energy to produce and transport. Start by establishing relationships with local coffee shops, most are thrilled to have someone take their ground. Collect enough to fill a 5-gallon bucket, which will process down to approximately 3 gallons of finished amendment enough to treat 50 to 75 square feet of garden bed. Transfer grounds to a sealable container and add water until thoroughly saturated but not swimming in liquid. Seal the container and place it in a shaded location where temperatures remain between 60 and 80 degrees. Allow fermentation to proceed for 72 to 96 hours. You'll detect a pleasant, slightly sour smell similar to yogurt. If the smell becomes putrid, you'll need to start over with better sealing or less water. After fermentation, spread the material in a layer 2 to 3 inches thick in a composting area. Mix in an equal volume of carbon-rich material like dried leaves or straw. Turn this mixture every three to four days. Within two to three weeks, you'll notice white fungal networks developing throughout. The material is ready when it has a pleasant, earthy smell and is reduced in volume by about half. Incorporate it into garden beds at about one to two inches mixed into the top six inches of soil or use it as a top dressing. Start with a small test area before treating your entire garden. The most common pitfall is using fresh, unfermented coffee grounds directly in the garden. The fermentation and composting process is essential for transforming these grounds into beneficial amendments. Another mistake is over-application. Your garden is about to experience a transformation that will fundamentally change how you think about soil amendments. This isn't about abandoning composting or cover cropping, it's about adding a powerful tool to your regenerative gardening toolkit. One that's accessible, affordable, and remarkably effective. If this discovery has sparked your curiosity and you're ready to revolutionize your approach to soil health, make sure to subscribe to the Living Soil Lab. We're constantly testing and uncovering gardening wisdom that challenges conventional thinking while delivering real, measurable results. Share this video with fellow gardeners who are ready to work smarter and build truly living soil. Together, we're creating a community that understands soil health isn't about buying solutions, it's about cultivating them. Your most abundant harvest is waiting, and now you have the knowledge to make it happen.